So what's going on guys, Kids here and welcome back to a brand new video. For today I will show you the new insane and improved Lepic build in the first Descendant. So in this guide I will show you what weapons and modules you want to get. Then I will explain every single skill and show you the best reactor stats and external components. And then lastly we will take a closer look at the gameplay and weapon mods. So you would know the reason behind every single choice and what exactly will give us the best results and highest damage possible and much more. If this sounds interesting to you, then let's get right into it. So, for our new Lepic build, we will focus on getting as much DPS as possible, while getting even more AOV buffs or our burn effects. This specific setup is made around stacking burn, AOV and most of our skills, to spam them 24-7 while waiting for our ultimate skill, to do massive amounts of damage to all the types of enemies, but especially bosses. And by doing this, we will be melting anyone you come across. Right now in the current meta, Lepic is one of the highest damage characters, but only if you play him right and optimize all the modules and mods. So I've done countless of hours of testing and here what I came up with. So then with that said, now let's take a closer look at our build modules. And for the first one, we want to use the multi maneuvering that modifies the max tax of grappling hook to 3, but then the base range decreases to 18 meters and the charge time increases by 20%. On top of this, we will increase our module capacity, which is our main goal. Then, second of all, we have the emergency measures that increases skill critical hit rate by 16% and skill critical hit damage by 7%. Then, front lines. That increases skill critical hit damage by 16% and skill critical hit rate by 7%. So pretty much both of these modules are the same thing. So we will get double the bonuses. Then skill simplification. That increases skill power modifier by 21%, but decreases max mana by minus 6%. Then focus on fire. That increases fire skill power by 19% and decreases skill cooldowns by minus 6%. Then skill concentration, that increases our skill critical hit damage by 14%. Then battle of stamina, that increases max HP by 12% and skill duration by 8.8%. Then spear and shield, that increases our defenses by 22% and skill power by 8%. Then time distribution, that decreases the skill cooldown by minus 4% and increases max HP by 13%. Then skill extension, that increases skill duration by 9%. And finally the enlightenment, that increases our max mana by 4%. So overall our main goal with the setup is to mainly use the emergency measures and skill concentration for massive amounts of damage increase. And then the rest of the modules are primarily for decreasing cooldowns, because a lot of our AOV damage will come from our skills. So the more often we use them, the more damage we will be able to do. Then next up let's take a look at the best weapons and mods that we should use. So for our weapon loadout, the first one is the Thunder Cage Submachine Gun. This is currently the number one meta weapon that doesn't need any introductions. But basically we will get up to half of million damage and when I farm more for my reactor, we could get this number even much higher. So the way you get this insane weapon is by first of all reaching the mastery rank 1, then obtaining the Thunder Cage Blueprint, Thunder Cage Nanotube, Thunder Cage Polymere Syncium and Thunder Cage Synthetic Fiber from various battlefield missions across the sterile land. And afterwards, you can take those four cage materials to the Anais in Albion and pay 100,000 gold to start the research request, and that's it. So then, when you got it, for mods, we want to use the rifling reinforcement that increases our explosive ADK by 12%. Then action and reaction, that increases explosive ADK by 15%, but increases recoil by 5%. Then weak point insight, that increases weak point damage by 5%, and critical hit rate by 1%. Then better insight, that increases critical hit rate by plus 10%. Then consume a magazine, that increases reload time modifier by 6%, and weak point damage by 2%. Then better concentration, that increases critical hit damage by 9%. Then fire rate concentration, that increases fire rate by 8%. And critical hit damage by 3.5%. Then concentration priority, for 8% critical hit damage increase, but reload time modifier gets decreased by 8%. And finally the chill enhancement, that adds the chill ATK equal to 8% of your weapon's ATK. With these mods like for most of the weapons, 
we will focus on increasing our damage and because of our insane buffs from the rest of our setup, we will focus on as much crit and explosive damage as possible. Then for our second weapon, we wanna use the Tamer. This is another amazing weapon, but just with more rounds per magazine, and much more slower movement speed. So we will switch between the Thunder and the Tamer, depending on if you are constantly on the move, or if you can just stand still and burst the enemy down with no interruptions. And the way you can get this weapon is by farming the Aegna Desert Zone, and the mission is called the Abandoned Restriction Site in the Remnant Area. The Aegna Desert is the 5th overworld zone in the game, and you must play through the main story campaign to unlock access to it. And this weapon can only be dropped as a random loot drop. And then, when you get this weapon, we wanna use mods like the Rifling Reinforcement, that increases our explosive ADK by 12%, then Expand Weapon Charge, that increases our rounds per magazine for 12%, then Fire Rate Concentration, that increases fire rate by 8%, and critical hit damage by 3%. Then Toxic Enhancement, that adds Explosive ADK equal to 8% of Weapon's ADK. Then Antimatter Round, that increases our Explosive ADK by 8% and Critical Hit Damage by 3%. And finally the Better Concentration, that increases Critical Hit Damage by 9%. The reasoning for this weapon is very similar to the Thunder Cage, because with these mods we try to increase our weapon's damage by critting as much as possible. And as from our skills, we will already do great explosive damage, so combining this with the weapon's AUV, we will be unstoppable. And finally, for our third weapon of choice, we have the Afterglow Sword Sniper Rifle. On hitting a weak point on the enemy, this weapon will inflict the unique effect called the Dead Propagation, which increases our critical hit rate and applies this effect to our next attack. We mainly want to use the Sniper for long range fights, but usually my third weapon slots are flex slots. So again, as long as you use the first two weapons, the last one is up to you. But I really like this weapon, as you can use it for multiple descendants at the same time. And then, the way you get it is by collecting all the items, then reaching Mastery 15 and researching it for 100,000 gold by talking to the Aeneas at the Albion. You can get the Afterglow Sword Blueprint, Nanotube Blueprint and the Polymere Syncytium by farming the Intercept Battle on the Hard Mode. And then for the last Afterglow Sword Synthetic Fiber Blueprint, you can get it from the Vespers on the Hard Mode, or from the Kingston on the Hard Mode as well. And then when you have it, you can use mods like the Weak Point Sight, that increases our Weak Point damage by 10%, but decreases accuracy by minus 5%, then Better Insight, which increases our critical hit rate by 10%, then Fatal Critical, which increases our critical hit damage by 5%, and critical hit rate by 1%. Then strengthen first shot, which that after you reload, your first shot gets 100% ADK increase. Then action and reaction, that increases explosive ADK by 15%, and recoil by 5%. Then better concentration, or increased critical hit damage by 9%. And finally the focus on fire, that increases our fire skill power by 19%, and decreases skill cooldown by minus 6%. As any sniper weapon, we want to increase our crits and overall damage. So with our mod setup, we have made it that you can basically crit the enemies 100% of the time. Then next up, let's go over to the best reactor and external components. So your reactor is very important item that determines your skill damage and can also include extra modifiers that buff certain aspects of your build. The better your reactor is, the more damage your skills will deal to enemies. I recommend prioritizing using a reactor, with a high skill power and a sub attack power. Specifically, my best job that I got is this burning singularity reactor, but I'm still farming to get the better optimization condition, that would be compatible with one of my three weapons. And then as for your external components, they're even more of an RNG, at least until you've played the game for long enough, to find basically every possible combination with a good stat roll. For our build specifically, I recommend to get the HP support sensor that increases our max HP, then defensive support memory, that increases our defenses, then HP support processor, for even more max HP, and finally the Tam Wong Ward processor, for more defensives. I've tried multiple setups, and going half in defenses and half in max HP was the best decision, so we can survive large amounts of enemy damage. And finally, let's quickly take a look at our skills, and when we should use them. The first passive skill is called the Close Call, 
that recovers HP when we take fatal damage, but this has a long cooldown. Then our first active skill is the grenade throw, that throws the grenade forward at the enemy. This is your basic AOV damage ability, in 5 meter radius with a low cooldown. You want to use overclock before throwing a grenade, so you could gain the burning damage over time effect. Essentially, you should be starting fights with the overclock and grenade throw, because both of these skills can be used basically 24-7. Then the second one is the overclock, that increases all skill ATK and adds a burning effect to the grenade and overkill for a set duration. Our goal is to activate the overkill prior to using other abilities to get the burn effect with a long duration of 18 seconds and a cooldown of 20 seconds. This skill should always be up as you cycle through the grenades and other skills, but because of our mod setup, we will almost have 100% uptime on our burn effect. Then we have the Chaction Grenade, that throws the grenade forward to pull the enemies within range. This is the perfect way to deal massive amounts of damage, so the rotation would be activating overclock, then throwing the Chaction, and then the grenade, and this will deal massive amounts of AOV damage with the burn effect. And finally we have the overkill, that fires a powerful shell at the enemy. The shell is maintained at the landing point for a set period of time, which will inflict constant damage. This is basically your ultimate ability, with a high mana cost and a long duration cooldown. The trick to using the skill is saving up your mana, because after you activate it, it will swap to an overkill weapon and gradually drain your mana, therefore activating it when you're almost drained out of mana won't help you, because the duration will be very short. So then, once the overkill weapon is active with a lot of mana, I usually start blasting enemies for AOV damage. While you can still activate overclock before for more burning damage, it will significantly lower the duration of the skill, in exchange for damage over time, so I don't recommend it. And that's about it. So with that said, I really do appreciate everyone for watching guys and I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or suggestions, then feel free to leave your comments in the comment section down below. And while you're doing that, please click like, subscribe and enable that notification bell. So this way you could support the channel and not miss any more amazing content. With that said, you have an amazing day and I will see you in the next one. So take it easy. Peace.